A lot of the news headlines in the week ahead will be dedicated to the latest Davos World Economic Forum in Switzerland, which runs from the 23rd to the 26th of January. This year's key theme will be creating a shared future in a fractured world. Now, last year's agenda, by the way, was responsive and responsible leadership. And you're doing better than me if you can remember anything that came out of that. I must, however, say that the Davos website stresses a list of 10 key achievements, top of which is a $400 million fund to combat deforestation in Norway, followed by a project to promote youth employment in the Arab world, and also work on improving the supply, of, supply chain for lithium and batteries. Now, this is all, let's face it, worthy and weighty stuff, but I'm not sure it moves financial markets that much, uh, looking at the World Economic Forum through that particular narrow perspective alone. So therefore, for, for markets perhaps of greater import will be interest rate decisions from the Bank of Japan on Tuesday the 23rd and the European Central Bank on Thursday the 25th, while also keep an eye on the UK unemployment and wage growth numbers on the 24th. As we can see here, wage growth, including bonuses in the UK, has been lagging inflation, so consumers and retailers will now not be wanting to see an acceleration in pay increases, although that, of course, could prompt the Bank of England to look at interest rates again. So we may all need to be a little bit careful about what we wish for. On the company front, a handful of FTSE 100 and a good number of FTSE 250 companies are due to publish results or release trading statements in the coming week. They include Trains to Buses Company First Group on Monday the 22nd, EasyJet and Dixon's Car Phone on the 23rd, Sage, JD Weatherspoon and house builder Crest Nicholson on the 24th, and Sky and St James's Place on Thursday the 25th of January, when AIM quoted retailer ASOS will also strut its stuff. But for me, the biggest potential source of a fuss in the week ahead is the interim results release that's due from drinks giant Diageo on Thursday, January the 25th. The shares were strong performers in 2017, as Diageo uncorked a near 30% gain, with dividends on top, compared to a rough 8% advance in the FTSE 100. Three things look to have underpinned Diageo's sterling share price climb to new all-time highs over the past you know, 12 months or so. First, the strength of its global brands such as Johnny Walker, Captain Morgan and Smirnoff. Second, the global trend towards liquor premiumization, which gives Diageo pricing power. And third, Diageo's own efficiency drive, which is designed to further increase profit margins. Now, when boss Ivan Menezes unveils the interims, analysts will first of all be looking at three strategic goals which the chief executive has already laid down and the progress towards them. So here, analysts will be looking at first, a target to generate trend mid-single-digit organic sales growth. Second, the plan to increase profit margins by 175 basis points, or one and three quarter percentage points, over the three years to June 2019. And then the ongoing £1.5 billion share buyback programme, which is originally designed to run from, la from last uh, September to this March. Now, some investors may like that, but it does look a little bit odd doing it now when, let's face it, the shares are an all-time high, and therefore by implications potentially more expensive than they've been previously. Now digging a bit deeper, also look out for commentary on organic volume and sales growth in the half. As we can see here, volumes have recovered from 2015's dip, when Chinese demand in particular slowed down, and pricing has been strong because sales growth has continued to outpace volume growth to again emphasise the benefits of the premiumization strategy. For the full year, analysts are looking for around a 7% increase in both earnings per share and dividend per share, so they're a pretty good benchmark for the first half. And if the shareholder distribution does grow as expected, that would extend a streak of annual dividend increases that runs back to 1999. This final graphic shows the last 10 years and forecasts for the next two. From a strictly investment perspective, investors must then consider the stock's valuation. A forward price earnings ratio of 22 and a half times based on consensus forecasts is a big premium to the UK market and the 2.5% prospective yield represents a discount. So while investors are getting quality in a relatively predictable earnings stream, they're having to pay quite highly to access it. Whether you think those numbers represent value, it's something that only you can decide for yourself once you've done your research. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.